Good evening and welcome to Covenant's Sacred Space, where we're gathered to take some time to wind down from the busyness of the day and settle our souls uh, in the presence of God. Tonight we're going to be looking at um, a great story. Oh, yes, it is um, a good story. Even just the way it's written down is a great story, and the way it was told would have been a great telling. Um, from Second Kings chapter 2, if you want to get your Bibles. But I invite you now to just take a few deep breaths, settle yourself into your chair, and um, join our spirit of prayer with Tracy as she and Kevin give us I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey, Lord, I want Jesus to us, Jesus, mm -hmm. in the depths of our hearts, in the busyness of our minds, and in the neediness mm -hmm. of our world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. This reading from Second Kings Chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. Now when God was about to take Elijah, Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elijah were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, for God has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elijah said, as God lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that today God will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elijah, Stay here, for God has sent me to Jericho. But Elijah said, As God lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that today God will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know, be silent. 
Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for God has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As God lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty, fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elijah said, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when Elijah could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the banks of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah and struck the water, saying, Where is God, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other, and Elijah went over. That is a good story. That is a great story. It reminds me of a, you know, some of the children's stories, you know, with the repetitive. Repetitive, nature. right? Yeah. It's a, it's a beautifully told story. This is one of the reasons you should always read scripture out loud. Yes. Um, <laughs> because you then pick up, oh, this, you know, this is that predictable pattern, yeah. and and I find with that story, as often with children's stories, that it sort of lulls you into thinking, you know, what's going to happen uh -huh. next, you know. <laughs> And when I was growing up, I was taught to name Elijah and Elisha, oh, which was a whole lot oh, easier. That's, I should have, yes. You uh, could have clued me into lot. that before. Elisha I know I should have clued you into that ahead of time. Um, but um, it makes it a lot easier to understand. They both begin with L, E-L, which is the one of the names for God. Yes. And that's a clue. Always in the Bible, names are important. And the fact that God is the first part of each one's name, yeah. I think, is, in, is important. Um, you know, the, this pattern is great. They, they, Elijah says, go home. And Elisha says, no. And then the priests um, who are, uh, and prophets who are sort of in the back, the, the Greek chorus kind of in the background mm -hmm. say, Elisha, what are you thinking? <laughs> you know, the guy's going to be gone today. Go Why home. are you following him? Don't, you know, give up. Go back home. And it happens three times, the same old pattern. The great prophet Elijah's time on earth is about done. Um, his role as a spokesperson for God mm -hmm. um, and his leadership in the country is coming to an end. And um, um, and you remember, maybe, you no, of course you don't remember. Maybe you remember what I've always quoted um, since hearing it from John McNeil, actually, Probably. originally, that what a prophet is, is one who proclaims mm -hmm. God's word to reclaim God's people. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're both prophets and all these other Greek chorus in the background um, are all prophets as well. This is not just about one person set aside to be a prophet. Right. This is a community of prophets. 
um, and and they are not at all supportive. Yeah. Um, Elijah, Elijah is the wise leader, and um, uh, his follower Elisha is hanging on tenaciously as long as he possibly can. Um, and then these other naysayers in the background are mm -hmm. kind of mocking Elisha for being so tenacious. But then the story takes a twist. And when Elisha asks Elijah to give him the spiritual power he has lived by. In fact, he wants double, double. it. <laughs> a little hubris there, a little <laughs> ambition. Um, but maybe he also knows that he needs double it well, right. because he's just Elisha and not Elijah. El Elijah knows that the power is not his to give. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's God. So he says... Um, if Elisha sees him disappear, somehow they knew what was going to happen, um, then he'll know that it's from God and he'll get the power. And then there's this bizarre bit about the well-named chariots of fire. Do you remember yes. that movie? Yes. Um, yes. Um, and Elijah does not die, but is swept up into a whirlwind. Um, it doesn't say, interestingly, he was not whipped up into the chariots. He was in a whirlwind. Right. Maybe the chariots were too, but anyway. Um, and Elisha sees it happen. So he picks up Elijah's cloak, his outer and, cape. Yep. Um, and then he repeats Elijah's action of slapping the river water with it, calling on the name of God. Are you there? Where are you, God? Um, and then clearly he got what he wanted because yep. the water the split. Parted. Um, he got the Spirit's power. And then he goes on to be that kind of prophet too, um, who proclaimed God's word to reclaim God's people. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. And one of the less violent and objectionable stories that come from that era, um, and particularly in First and Second Kings. Um, so what does it have to say to us today? Well, because it's Black History Month, I've been thinking a lot about great leaders yeah. like Elijah, um, leaders of this nation who have been God's spokespersons, and not obviously the leaders of the nation, formally, necessarily, but the leaders of what God wants for the nation. Um, some of them used words, and some of them just struck the water with whatever they had to hand. You know, the um, Sojourner Truth, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, Rosa Parks, Mark, Martin, um, Malcolm X, um, and closer to our time, the John Lewises mm -hmm. and in the Dr. Barbers, um, who still are prophets of God, proclaiming God's word to reclaim God's people in their own ways. And still, there are naysayers, people who think they're prophets or leaders, um, who are discouraging mm -hmm. the words of the great prophets who are proclaiming God's wisdom, not people's. Um, and they are people who, um, there are also people who are take a lot of convincing. Um, if we had read on another verse, we would have discovered that those 50 prophets who were such discouragement to Elisha then realized that the Spirit of God was indeed upon him. And they were um, not so quick to discourage. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, um, there are still people being called by God today. Um, and, call, and I think it's all of us. Because I think what all prophets are calling us back to, um, as it was in First Kings, it was as it is today, is to... Um, the holy troublemaking uh -huh. um, yes. that John Lewis talked about. Yes. The, the, we're being called back 
to, to truth, to um, justice, to peace, um, to living as if we really are the people of God. Um, and thanks be to God, there are still Elishas who tenaciously cling to the vision, to the wisdom, to the spirit um, of all those of Elijah's who have gone before us um, and, and who are still um, taking up the mantle of um, Elijah, of um, these great prophets of our era even, taking up the mantle, but not putting it on and trying to become that person, right. but using it, their wisdom and their spirit and that power that they have amassed over the centuries now um, as a tool in their own way mm -hmm. to part the waters um, of injustice and all the other demon kinds of things that we talked about um, yesterday, right. to use the mantle of our history um, and particularly of black history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a tool to move us forward into um, God's vision with God's power behind us. Um, now, before you get all discouraged <laughs> into thinking, oh, you're not a prophet, you can't proclaim, you know, you're not out on television and all that kind of stuff. Um, let me tell you something that happened to me. Um, several years ago, I was going through a very rough patch um, in my ministry and my job as a pastor. And I was this close, mm -hmm. this close. I'm sure that was after I left. Oh, I must have been, okay. it must yeah. have been. Um, um, to leaving the ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, Benedictine sister Joan Chittister came to um, Rochester, came to speak at Fairport at the Roman, one of the Roman Catholic churches there. And, um, you know, being the good Benedictine oblate, I went to listen to her. And she spoke about the prophets of old, the Elijahs, the Elishas, the Micahs, the Isaiahs, mm -hmm. the Jeremiahs. And every time she told the story about one of the prophets, um, she told it as if um, their day was just like our day. Oh. And it and it's true. We talk about this yes. all the time. That's the yeah. the relevance of the Bible is because those stories still ring true. Um, and she ended every one with um, Micah's not here, but you are. Yeah. 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 Isaiah's not here, mm -hmm. but you are. Elijah's not here, but you are. Elisha's not here, but you are. Will we pick up the mantle? Mm -hmm. Can we learn from our history what we've done wrong and what we need to do better? As we, what was that? As we, as we know better, we get better. We do better, yes. We do better. Can we tenaciously cling to the wisdom of our forebears, no matter what the color of their skin? Especially our own dear prophet, Jesus. Can we proclaim God's way, with or without words, so that we can reclaim God's people? We might not be headline-making like Elijah, um, we might just be one of those minor prophets in the background who uh, need to move on from being discouraged um, and discouraging to being empowered as they watch what happens when somebody becomes imbued with the Spirit of God. That's our question. Mm -hmm. And here's kind of my take for the point of this whole story. We can... Um, we are here now. Nobody else is called. Of course we are. We're all called. But God is speaking to each and every one of us individually. 
to take up the mantle, tell our own story of how God speaks or how we've listened or not, um, um, or how we've been reassured by Jesus walking with us. And we can be reassured this night. We can rest assured into this evening knowing that the Spirit of God is with us and within us. And we are here for that purpose. Hmm. And side by side with our sister and brother prophets, our job is to sing that song of hope that the God of Elisha and Elijah hmm. and Sojourner or Malcolm are with us now. Amen. Amen. Um, the background to uh, the prayer is holy ground. And there was um, uh, uh, Elijah saw something spectacular and but it was also witnessed by the 50. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a life transforming event and that's always holy. Mm -hmm. So in whatever holy ground you embody, mm. um, let us enter into a time of prayer. God of grace and God of glory, we stand before you now on holy ground, surrounded by your spirit, praising Jesus now. Come to us in the midst of ancient stories and new beginnings. Reveal to us your truth in word and song. In this sacred and holy moment, wrap your Holy Spirit around us like a warm blanket. Comfort us in our times of sadness and grief, in times of impatience and weariness, in times of anxiety and stress. Feeling the power of your great love and grateful for your gift of amazing grace, we lift to you the prayers of your people. For Marcy upon the death of her mother, for Peggy mourning the loss of Ralph, for Tom anticipating surgery, for DeWitt who celebrates a birthday on Sunday. And for those who will begin a holy conversation on race. As we stand here on holy ground, reassured that there are angels all around, let us praise Jesus now by joining together, praying the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh.
I don't know what's Wednesday. Oh, I can probably tell you. I bet it's a psalm. I'm sure it is. Uh, yeah, it's um, Psalm 50. Oh. Verses 1 to 6. I guess I better start thinking about that. Well, it says Anne slash Chris. So maybe oh. you, maybe it's Chris's. <laughs> you want me to tell you what's Friday? Oh, well, that's, that's right. <laughs> no, Chris, you know, Chris is... Chris is doing this. I'm not sure if it's Second Corinthians or... Well, we're, we'll see. We'll find out. Tune in on Wednesday. <laughs> um, and um, 50... So it's Psalm uh, 50, verses 1 to 6. And, um, and then Tuesday uh, is, is our, our, com conversation our conversations on race. on race will start. So there's still time. Um, the prep work might be a little hard to squeeze in, but there's not a lot. But um, certainly, if you're interested in those conversations, let us know, and we'll get your email and send you the Zoom link. It's 6.30 to 7.30 on Tuesdays. Right, and that's for four weeks. Yep. And um, next week begins Lent, and we have prepared some um, packages for you um, to enhance your spiritual journey with Jesus during Lent. We're going to be focusing on journeying with Jesus, but with hope through it all. Um, if you let us know that you want a packet, um, you can either come to church and pick one up after Tuesday of this week, or um, we can deliver one to you. We will also have the guide um, that's part of the package. Um, on the website so that if you don't want the whole package, you can at least have the digital guide. Um, and we'll get, we'll tell you more about how to access that um, next week or as it's available. Yeah. And don't be shy about asking for delivery because we have a team of people who have volunteered yeah. to, um, and you know, you, you get to see a familiar face. So it's a win-win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all good. And, um, since it is DeWitt's birthday yeah. coming up, it would be fun if we showered him with birthday yes. cards. Yes. Um, he's at the Shire at Culverton. Um, and I'm sure if you called the church office, Bob would give you the exact address. Or you can look it up um, online. Um, mm -hmm. so. um, I, I, as we close... Um, um, we're going to be blessed um, by Tracy singing, lift every voice and sing. What a way to go out. But before she does that, um, I want to um, bless you as I have been blessed by these words from John Lewis and Brenda Jones. It's all about how to walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Study the path of others to make your own way easier and more abundant. Lean toward the whispers of your own heart. Discover the universal truth and follow its dictates. Know that the truth always leads to love and the perpetuation of peace. This is mm. Martin Luther King's um, statement. I have decided to stick with love. Clothe yourself in the work of love, in the revolutionary work of nonviolent resistance against evil. Anchor the eternity of love in your own soul and embed this planet with goodness. Release the need to hate. Mm -hmm to harbor division and the enticement of revenge. Release all bitterness. Hold only love, only peace in your heart, knowing that the battle of good to overcome evil is already won. Hmm. Choose confrontation wisely, but when it is your time, don't be afraid to speak to stand up, to speak out against injustice. And if you follow your truth down the road to peace, 
and the affirmation of love. If you shine like a beacon for all to see, then the poetry of all the great dreamers and philosophers is yours to manifest in a nation, a world community, a beloved community that is finally at peace with itself. Amen. Lift every voice and sing. Let us march on. 